Okay, so this is our next skill. Our first skill was determining formula mass using the mole concept. The second skill was with a formula mass doing a percent composition. We applied it with a hydrate percent by mass. And now, and this is the cool part of analytical chemistry, we're going to actually build a chemical formula from percent by masses. So let's say you found a percent by mass in lab. Hey, you did. Now you did it for a hydrate, but you did. If you have these percentages of different elements that build a formula up, you can actually make the chemical formula, the empirical formula. So if I have the percentages already determined by a um, experimental design, much like you did yesterday with the percent by mass of water in a hydrate, we can actually build the chemical formula. So I've got this powder. I do chemical tests. I come up with these percentages. What is the chemical formula? Okay, watch how I do this. All right, now I'm going to probably go to number, uh, let's go to number one. Let's we'll do number one, okay? Let's be crazy and go in order, okay? Now, here's what I do I'm going to take my percentages and I'm going to make an assumption. I know when you make an assumption, you make a donkey out of you and me. But here's what I'm going to do. Because they're percentages, I'm going to take these percentages and write them down. I have 36, oops, that's too big. I have 36, too big again. All right, I can do this. 36.5 percent sodium, that's Na, 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 na. And I have 25. 0.4% sulfur, and I have 38% oxygen. Again, these percentages were determined much like the way that you determined the percent by mass of water in a hydrate yesterday. So through some laboratory analysis, we came up with the percent by mass of these types of elements in this unknown sample, and we want to build an empirical formula. Now, empirical means lowest ratio. Percentages are only going to give us that. I'll talk about that in a second. But let's go build a formula. From these percentages, I can come up with a formula. Now, this is a percent by mass, not a percent by how many. When you build a chemical formula, you need to know there's two H's to one O. But we want to take the mass and convert to how many. If I'm converting to a how many number, what am I going to convert to? What's a how many number we use in chemistry? Mole, correct. So I got to convert these to moles. But these are percentages right now. It's, it actually has no unit. So I'm going to first assume a 100 gram sample. So the first thing I do with these percentages is I assume a 100 gram sample. Why am I assuming a 100 gram sample? If I have a 100 gram sample, what is 36.5% of 100 grams? 36.5 grams. What's 25.4% of 100? 25.4 grams. Now you can assume 1,000 grams, but I'm going to keep it as understandable as I possibly can. So by assuming a 100 gram sample, this becomes 36.5 grams of sodium. This becomes 25.4 grams of sulfur, and this becomes 38.0 grams of oxygen. Now I have mass, but this is still no good. Chemical formulas are not built upon how much heavier something is. It's, it's a how many number. So we convert, just like Cam Cam said, to moles. So we know how to do that. So we're going to get rid of grams, and grams go on the bottom. We're going to use our units. And one mole is how many grams? Well, I go to my periodic table. I find that the atomic mass of sodium is 23. And I put that down there. And I come up with moles. And here we go. 36.5er divide by 23. OK? And that gives me from my calculator, 1.58, 6, I'm going to write some numbers down, 
9. I'm going to write some numbers, okay? That's moles because my grams cancel. That's of sodium. Let's do it for sulfur. Now, sulfur is a different atom. So one mole of sulfur, I'm getting rid of grams. Grams go on the bottom. I look on my periodic table. Sulfur has an atomic mass or a gram atomic mass of 32. I know these because I'm a geek and I study them at night, okay? Or I've been doing it for a while. All right, so 25.4 divided by 32. And this gives me 0.79. I'm keeping some numbers. I'm not worried about sig figs here. 375. Anybody can look at something for a second? How do these two numbers compare? compare? About? If you round this to 1.6 and you round this to 0.8, how do these two numbers compare? compare? Yeah, this is half. Hey, we've got a ratio maybe building. Okay? Let's convert the 38. Now, this is oxygen, not O2. It's atoms of oxygen. So we're going to convert that as well. Here we go. Oxygen is a different element. We're going to get rid of grams. We want mole. Oxygen is 16 grams per mole of oxygen. Grams cancel. 38 divided by 16. But don't you want grams per mole? Nope. I just want total moles. I'm converting. I'm not, this is not a formula mass. We're trying to come up with the, the, the formula. So from the percentages, assuming 100 grams gives me the grams, I convert to how heavy to how many, and we're going to see if there's a ratio of how many. That's what we need. So this gives me 2.375. Anyone see any patterns here? Around this is 2.4. Around this to 0.8. Around this to 1.6. What's the ratio? Now it's okay if you don't see it. But isn't this 2.4 four times this thing? And if this is 1.6, okay. Now to get the whole number ratio to pop out, here's the last piece. Let's go over the steps again. I assumed the 100 gram sample. Made my percentages go to grams. I converted my how heavy into how many, into moles. Next step, come up with a ratio. For instance, if I wanted to come up with a ratio, I'd probably pick, of height in this room, I'd pick the shortest person in here to be the standard, right? If I wanted a ratio of, of, uh, of height of students in my class, I'd probably take the shortest person, and I'd divide everyone's height by that. The shortest person will wind up being one, okay? So, who do we divide by in here? Oh. <laughs> so we divide by Sarah. So we divide by Sarah. Which one's Sarah? So let's divide by Sarah. Sorry, Sarah, but it works out. So here we go, last step. So 0 0.79375 divided by itself is going to give you what value? One. You don't really need it. 1.5869 divided by the Sarah, 79375. By, by the way, it's cool to be on the spectrum. I'm always on the other end of the spectrum. So if you want to put this in your calculator, you can. 1.5869 divided by 0.79375er. That gives me 1.9924. Essentially, that's what? Two. The reason why it's not perfectly two is because you rounded somewhere in these percentages. So that gives me two. Somewhere. And you can guess that 2.375er divided by the Sarah gives me approximately what? Four. It probably a 3.99. So what does this tell me? When I convert it to moles, there's four times the amount of oxygen to one sulfur to two sodiums. Let's build a chemical formula. So wait a minute. I've got two sodiums. I have one sulfur. 
And I have how many oxygens? Right. Anyone see how that nicely built? Two sodiums, one sulfur, and four oxygens. Hey, does that even work? Does that, does that exist? What the heck is SO4? Sulfate, you go to table E, it's negative two. Each sodium is plus one. We just found the chemical formula of our unknown white powder once we had the percentages. That's called analytical chemistry. That's your third skill. Okay? Now, why is it the lowest ratio? If you have percentages, you can only come up with the lowest ratio. Yes? 24 divided by 8 is definitely 3. This is my bad. Thank you. It, sorry, I got too overzealous. I should have checked. So this would be a 3. It doesn't change anything because SO3 is a sulfite. It's negative 2 as well. So yeah, thanks for the catch. You're right. Did my math right. The one I didn't check, the one I got wrong. But yeah, there you go. And it works. Now why do we get a lower, lowest ratio here? If you're using percentages, percentages don't tell you how many. Think about it. If 50% of the molecules are, are carbon and 50% of the molecules are hydrogen, I don't know if it's a C to an H or C6H6. It doesn't tell me that. It just tells me the lowest ratio. But what's nice is ionic compounds are always the lowest ratio. Okay, I want you to try number two right now. Right now, number two. By yeah. You do my own some chasing tables. Yes. Can we borrow the reference? You can definitely borrow reference tables. Okay. Here. Clear cut, guys. Straightforward. None of this polarity stuff. We need the reference table. Like in the math. Anyone? Question? No? What's my first step? Okay. All right. So they're the same number. So what's the ratio? What's the lowest ratio? Right. Exactly. It tricked me 
Yeah. Right. <laughs> divide by the Sarah. What do you get? Five divided by five? If you don't see it. Who would have knew? <laughs> How strange is that? That 95% of the mass of the entire sample is fluorine, yet it's a one-to-one. -one. You know why that works? Because fluorine is 19 times more massive. Okay? So this is HF, which, by the way, works out. Fluorine, check it out, people. Check it out. Fluorine has how many valence electrons? The halogen, group 17. Right, hydrogen has one. Does it make sense? Okay, now listen. This is how it's usually given. However, I could do this a different way. Pay attention. I don't have to give you percentages. What if I just gave you the grams from a lab? Oh, you found it five grams out of 100. So you just convert to moles and do what? Find your ratio. What if I gave you the moles already? What do you find? What do you do there? Just find the ratio, right? Now some people got confused because it was the same. Remember, all we know is lowest ratio from percentages. So five to five means hey, this is the same amount. So it's a one to one. Okay. So three, four, and five are your homework. But let's go on to skill number four. You're gonna love this one, okay? Okay, now watch. Last skill, number six. We already, stay with me please, we already found the empirical formula to be CH3. We just did this problem. We found the percentages, we assumed a 100 gram sample, we converted to moles, we divided by the SARA, and we got a one to three ratio. We already got this. Now, listen, in a separate chemical or separate experiment, we, ter we determined that the molecular mass, the mass of the actual formula is 30 grams. Stay with me. There are molecular formulas and there's empirical formulas. For instance, here is the molecular formula as an example of hydrogen peroxide. I used to use it to make my hair blonde. Maybe I used too much of it. Now, this is the molecular formula. This is how it exists as a molecule. Molecules don't have to be lowest ratio. What would be the empirical formula, the lowest ratio of the H2O2? HO. HO, so it's a ho. <laughs> so, if I have something covalently bonded, the method that we just use will only give me the hose. Sometimes it's the empirical, sometimes it's not. So I'm giving you the hoe right now. We want what it exists like in nature, so follow me. This is the best one today. So here's what I do, I call this the box question. Draw a box or uh, an X like this. Now. Across, I guess. <laughs> I guess I was being artsy. So <laughs> it was on the side. Now watch. The empirical formula is on the bottom. It's the lowest ratio. The molecular formula. Okay, the molecular form is how it exists in nature, and sometimes it exists in nature not in the lowest form. Watch. Okay, what are they giving me? The empirical formula. I'll write that. CH3, right there. That's the lowest ratio. That doesn't exist this way. Now, what are they giving me? The molecular mass is 30 grams. So watch, party people, I put 30 here. Now watch what I do. I'm going to find the empirical mass. Now, 1H is 1 apiece, right? So I have 3 H's. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is what? Plus carbon's mass. 12 gives me what? What's the mass of this formula, of the empirical formula? 15. Okay, cool beans. 
Check this out, party people. Wait a minute. 30 divided by 15 is what? Two. Two. So that must mean that I have to double this number. If I have to double this side, I've got to double this side. Anyone guess what the actual molecular formula is? Two times, well, yes, C2H6. What did I just do? Hey, I just doubled the carbon and I doubled the H. And if you want to check, this will add up to 30. Two times 12, 24 plus 6 is 30. That's your answer to this question. Let's try number 7 together. 16. Do number 7 now. Okay, let's draw a box question. How do I know it's a box? Because they're giving me the lowest ratio, which is right here. The empirical is the lowest ratio. They're giving me the molecular mass, the mass of the molecular compound to be 108. So I'm going to add this up. 2 times 14 is what? 28. 5 times 16 is what? 80. When I add this up, what do I get? I get 108. Oh, what? What? So this is times what? Times one. So guess what the molecular formula is? Same thing. Same thing. Hey. So guess what? It was a whole all along. Okay. <laughs> Check out water. Does water exist this way? H2O. Is it? Doesn't water exist already in its lowest form? So water exists as an empirical formula, lowest ratio ready, but naturally, it exists this way in nature, so it's also the molecular formula. So this is an example where it's the both. I want you to finish the worksheet. Okay, now the key will be posted. There's no form. Please come, please come in and have practiced this. Okay, good job. There, there may be a rat. Okay. It'll be on mostly percent by mass, formula mass, and hydrate. I won't have a rat on this. But we should be good with this, yeah?